Hi, my name is Nancy Love, and I'm making a behavioral medical oriented uh, video on behalf of the Planet Peace Project, a fledgling organization that wants to help change the world. Over here, we got yourself a drawing I did of a member of Team TR3B. I identify very strongly with her, so I'm including her in some of my videos these days. Anyway, um, I want to talk about marijuana. Lots of people want to talk about marijuana and how to profit from it because in so many states now, I think more than half the states in the United States, it's become uh, legal to sell it. It's still a federal offense, but the uh, federal agencies are to a large degree, I think, uh, yielding to states' rights, and there are certainly movements in the United States to uh, legalize it on a federal basis. Now, I do want to say that I am actually a proponent of legalization of marijuana uh, for a lot of reasons, because it can have some fairly uh, powerful and beneficial medicinal uh, healing qualities when used judiciously. But like practically anything that affects the brain and the brain chemistry, using marijuana itself can affect the judicious or injudicious use of it. In other words, if you wanted to have a, a drink of alcohol, after you've had one drink of alcohol, your judgment is actually affected about whether or not you should have a second drink, and that's in the books. I've read that, you know, like half a century ago in, in uh, texts of physiology and anatomy and biochemistry. And I think to some extent marijuana may be the same way. Um, cigarettes, um, a lot of things affect your judgment about whether or not you should continue using them e even uh, within a day. So... I want to address the idea that marijuana is a gateway drug. Back in the 70s and 80s, when it was first becoming uh, very prevalent in use, maybe the 60s, uh, but I wasn't, you know, in the milieu then. <laughs> I wasn't an adult then, so I don't really have much to say, a way to speak to that directly and personally. But in the 70s and 80s, when practically everyone at the college that I went to both students and professors and some administrators were using it um, illegally in Texas. <sighs> it was called a gateway drug, and the popular press would warn folks that using marijuana uh, could induce the desire to use other types of drugs. That doesn't necessarily turn out to be true at all. There are a lot of people now that I can see through anecdotal research and observation of people that I've known personally, particularly in the music industry, uh, creative writers, uh, IT tech people, artists, and in the film and TV industry. And those are the areas that I've had uh, my own expertise in and worked in more than other areas such as engineering or manufacturing or politics. Um, what I see is there are people who are lifelong smokers of marijuana and they they don't even do much alcohol. Uh, they don't necessarily go off the deep end and become LSD addicts or do cocaine or heroin or anything. There are plenty of people who just enjoy using marijuana or, or not only enjoy it, its use but have some sort of medicinal or beneficial um, effect from it psychologically or physiologically from the standpoint of helping with pain relief or something of that nature. Now, is it a gateway for some? Here's how marijuana is and can be a gateway. If it's illegal where you use it, it and you want to use it, it puts you in touch with the types of people who are willing to break the law to get it to you. There are people who uh, swear that they will always be the end user, the, the last in the line of distribution, and they don't uh, redistribute it themselves at all, ever. And there are people who decide to take the legal risks, the financial risks, the social risks, the professional risks, 
uh, of becoming dealers. And in my experience and talking to people who are getting clean from this, that, or the other, uh, very, very often people start dealing marijuana illegally, but then they also become, you know, they get asked for other types of things. So they, they're already dealing with the kind of people who are trafficking in illegal drugs. So then they go ahead and start trafficking cocaine or heroin or psilocybe or something of that nature. Hey, if you really want psilocybe, figure out what it looks like. Go out to a cow pasture, find it yourself. Uh, you know, you don't need a dealer to do something as natural as uh, psilocybe, peyote, or mescaline. And these things have been used for not just centuries, but millennia by human beings. So you don't need a cocaine dealer or a heroin dealer to get psilocybe. But people in, I know in California for sure, are um, doing that. And I just want to say that once you get involved with the kinds of people who are willing to sell drugs illegally and take the legal risks and the, the risk to their families, their futures, their professional desires, and so forth, um, that's a conundrum that you've gotten yourself into. If you really want to use marijuana, try to find a way or make a way to grow it yourself and uh, process it, learn what you have to learn to grow it, and um, go ahead and move forward with it on a highly personal level. That way you can make sure it's not doctored with anything. As I've stated in a previous video, um, the, the worst thing about marijuana these days is it's not necessarily just marijuana. It's being used as a vehicle. And I've, I've been told this by police officers who are just devastated because they'll find some person who thought they were smoking marijuana, but it was uh, doctored with fentanyl or um, speed or something else. And then they have this physiological and psychological response that's very terrifying because they thought they were just smoking pot and what they actually were was, you know, overdosing on fentanyl accidentally because although they may not have ever been in a room on purpose with that stuff, there it was in the drug they got, often legally, according to the state's laws in uh, California, uh, at a collective that's a tax-paying, bona fide, you know, city-approved collective. So think about the gateway as this. If you're going to be in compliance with state laws in a place in America where your community has decided that it is okay for you to utilize marijuana, try to do it personally, privately, and without getting involved with the kinds of people who are selling other things. Because when people start doing um, cocaine, heroin, methamphetamines, uh, misusing Adderall, remarketing and redistributing pharmaceuticals like that, uh, all these sedatives. What you are involved with is people who are often very addicted to, uh, they have polysubstance abuse. They're addicted to not one thing, but quite a whole handful of things. And they don't think correctly because their brains, which were designed to work on air, water, food, and sleep, air, water, food, and sleep are now struggling every day to function on all kinds of different drugs and often including alcohol, which is so ubiquitously available that people take it for granted. Alcohol is an extremely dangerous drug. It is a mind-altering drug. It is a behavioral, uh, behavior-altering drug, and it is a neurotoxin. Alcohol is actually poisonous. So people who are doing that on top of all these other things are putting way too much spin on the brain ball, and they are not thinking correctly. So you are now associating with people who can't function cognitively because they've got too many darn chemicals in their brain that weren't, you know, and the brain wasn't designed to deal with all that junk. And there you go, thinking again, trying to get, you know, friendships or meaningful business relationships or whatever out of people who can't function correctly because 
they aren't really all there anymore. Uh, I am getting more and more vehement about things like this in my old age because I have counseled way too many people, both informally and more uh, from the standpoint of a professional action. People will cry on me. That's why I get on here and, and not only teach but preach sometimes. I get really radical because I have held way too many people in my arms while they cry over what drugs and alcohol have done to their lives. And some of these people are in their late teens or early 20s. And some of these people are in their 60s and 70s. So there are people I know who have, have dealt with drug and alcohol addiction literally for decades. They're often in the music or film and TV industry. And there are a, a whole handful of uh, primarily men I know who died in their 50s due to drug addiction and alcohol cirrhosis, alcohol-induced cirrhosis of the liver. So these things can kill you and shorten your lifespan by decades. Uh, then we get into, you know, um, how they affect your driving. If you drive cars and trucks and so forth, uh, God forbid you pilot an airplane on this garbage. But um, we all know people who died in, in drug and alcohol-induced uh, vehicle crashes. Uh, there are people who are getting into trouble for being bus drivers or train conductors or, you know, you just don't want people responsible for moving heavy objects around in public on these kinds of things. And it's a very legitimate request that people don't drive drunk or drug. We all have a right to be on our roads and highways, trains and, and so forth without having people brain addled this way. So um, me and Team TR3 lady here, uh, TR3B lady here, have a lot to say about this. Behavioral medical approaches to psychology stress how lifestyle, diet, nutrition, and uh, these choices we make in those areas affect our physical health and well-being and to some extent how our physical health and well-being may be inherited conditions or degenerative conditions or conditions that are resulting from injury or some other like type of toxicity or whatever, how our, or how our physical health can affect our psychological health and lifestyle choices. It's a very complex field. It is a very fascinating field. Uh, a lot of people with medical degrees are extremely interested in behavioral medicine now because they see how, how cogently it addresses the issues that their patients uh, come to report in their offices. So if you're a young person or an old person for that matter trying to figure out what you want to do in your next professional step, consider psychology with a behavioral medical approach or specialty because it will truly, truly help you understand what it is to be a soul inhabiting a molecular body, a, a soul or individual trying to utilize a brain that is subject to and uh, vulnerable to chemistry and physiological changes, even when your soul, your personality, or your individuality does not want to be. Anyway, more later. Thank you for your attention.